Hi everyone, 50 things that I no longer buy. Now, obviously I'm having to title this video like this because as an extreme minimalist, if I started to say now things like 50 things I no longer own, to a lot of you that watch my kind of 99 items videos or less, realise that there is actually probably more that I don't own than that I do own. So I think it's kind of more now feasible to actually say what I would no longer buy rather than what I only own one of or own none of. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. I'm going to go through 50 things. There may be more, there may be a part B at some point, but today 50 things that I no longer buy, the reasons why I no longer buy them, things that I can't see myself ever really buying in the future. So here we go. So I'm going to try and do this in a way that is a little bit categorised. So we're going to start in the kitchen and number one is a toaster. I no longer buy toasters. I can't see myself ever wanting a toaster. The only reason you may ever in a future video see a toaster is if my partner professes a urgent need for a toaster in which case I can't really control what it does I live in this space with somebody else but personally myself I would never want a toaster to be honest I never saw the point in them anyway you know we can grill our toast on a pan under the grill itself personally I hate how much crumbs and mess they make on the side it's just one extra thing to have on the side so I'm no longer buying toasters and in that same kind of category of kitchen utensils is number two, juices. I personally don't like the mess that juices make. I know that some people are into doing the juicing, doing the smoothies every day. I would rather just eat the fruit. And if occasionally I got an urgent need or desire to have fruit, just occasionally buy myself a bottle of fruit juice. I just think it's one extra thing to have out on your side or even in your cupboard. So I will know, I've never bought a juicer, I won't be buying a juicer in the future. Number three is air fryers. I don't particularly eat fried food that often anyway. I personally think they're absolutely huge. So even if I liked fried food, I'd probably discourage myself from getting one just because of the sheer size it is. Even if you had a very large kitchen, I just think there are some things that perhaps we can save to eat when we're eating out and maybe that would encourage us to eat healthier if we don't actually keep kind of fried food makers in the house so air fryers fryers anything like that of the fry variety i've never bought i will not buy in the future fourth is sole use egg cups now I do actually eat quite a lot of boiled eggs but what i realized are that an egg cup is really not really an essential item. It's quite easy to just break the top of your boiled egg, scoop the stuff out, eat it. I don't think you really need something holding it. And usually you will find that there is something else in your kitchen that can do that job. For instance, for a long time we had espresso cups and they held the eggs perfectly fine. But then slowly I realised that I didn't actually really even need that. I can just literally hold it, eat the middle, duck your soldiers, whatever you want to do. I don't think you really need the egg cup holders. And five, knife blocks. I personally think that knife blocks are big, bulky. They take up space on the counter side. My mum always told me that she thinks that knife blocks can actually lead to a lot of accidents. If they get knocked over, the knives can fall out. She don't think it's a good idea to keep knives on the side. Personally, if I was going to keep knives on the side, I think I prefer the kind of magnetic strips, the flat on the wall, out of the way, not taking up counter space. But in general, I just will keep, I have two knives, a bread knife, a sharp knife for chopping, and we keep them in a utensils pot. But that isn't really our preferable choice. In the past, I've always been away in the drawer, in a drawer in the kitchen. But as we only have one drawer in this kitchen, unfortunately, they just have to be in the utensils pot. So no knife blocks for me in the future and next we have excess cutlery so before i did used to just have one for me and my partner but when we moved somewhere else unfortunately now all cutlery seems to be given in sets so we have one cutlery set but it isn't anything fancy it doesn't ha it just has a knife a fork and a spoon so what i really mean is excess kind of large 
palatial type cutlery sets with little mini forks, little mini spoons, all the fancy serving spoons. We have none of that kind of extra cutlery. And next we have glasses in terms of all different kinds of glasses. Now, don't get me wrong, I am somebody who in the past has loved that certain glasses have certain jobs. For instance, I love the Marie Antoinette champagne glasses and the story behind that. I love the Margarita glasses. I love a big brandy glass. I love that you can look at the glass and identify what the drink is. But I think that that is a little bit over the top, just in a household, you know, all those glasses are gonna take up a lot of, of space in your cupboards. And to be honest, how often are you really going to make all those different kinds of drinks just in your home. I think the glass thing really kind of breeds the idea of excess, that we think that we need all these things in our house, just in case somebody comes over that wants a margarita or wants brandy or wants champagne. And there are some things that I think serve well as feeling more like a treat when we go out, if we don't have all these little extras in our house. So, this is one thing that in the past I actually have had, but I won't have in the future. I think that having a cup or a glass or a glass cup is perfectly fine and we don't really need anything more. I could sort of accept somebody wanting a wine glass, especially if you are a wine connoisseur. I know there's um, ideas about it being able to breathe in the glass better and when you swill it etc but I think anything more than that to me feels like a bit much and a bit unnecessary so in the future I won't be having any individual glasses. Sorry I'm getting com getting uncomfortable here on the floor let me get comfortable and next is individual tools that do one job in the kitchen one use a ice cream scoops, apple decorers, all that kind of thing. I don't have things that do individual jobs like that. I can use a regular spoon as an ice cream scoop. I can use a knife to decor my apple. I can use a regular knife to slice an egg. I don't need an egg slicer. So no individual tools like that in my future. Or in fact, I don't think I've ever had them in the past with the exception perhaps of an ice cream scoop. I do not know why I ever had one of them. And also, along that line of thought is tools that do single jobs, i.e. rice cookers. I don't know why anybody needs a rice cooker. I personally think rice is one of the easiest things possible to cook. You know, put a little bit of water in, leave it to steam. You can even turn the heat off, leave it to steam so you don't even have to worry about it boiling over. There really is no need for a rice cooker. And guys, if the camera starts moving a little bit, it's because I have you standing on the bed because I wanted to give you a different background. So you may see that some of these shots are ever so slightly moving because it's when I, when it keeps moving slightly on the bed. Anyway, next on the list, we have keeping with the individual uses, microwaves. Yes, they can warm a lot of things up. Personally, I don't like how big and bulky they are. I don't think it is the best way to cook your food and it encourages us not to have fresh food. So microwaves are not in my personal future. So now let's move on to a slight kind of bathroom section. You may organise your stuff differently, but I keep a certain set of things in my bathroom, a certain set of things in my bedroom. So some of these are organised how I organise them into rooms in my mind. So starting in the bathroom, Let's think of the normal thing that people might keep in the bathroom. So I know that a lot of people use a daily kind of day cream, night cream, that kind of moisturiser cream. I don't personally do that. I don't own individual moisturisers. I can't see myself really buying one in the future. I like to have a tinted moisturiser in the day that also has a built-in SPF and if I ever wear some kind of hydration on my skin it tends to be an oil or a serum. So personally I don't have moisturisers in the future. I think now there are lots of things that are perhaps better and things that are multifunctional that help us cut down the amount of that type of item that we need to buy shall I say. So. Along that school of thought with facials, I don't and will never buy any kind of facial devices. I don't think they work. Um, like the 
the rollers, the stones that people use. I'm not sure what they're even called. I don't think they work. Maybe at the bare minimum, maybe it does something to do with drainage, the massage, but I don't really think it firms or tones skin. Personal thought, if you like it and you believe it works, by all means, keep it. I won't ever be buying any in my future. Also, I don't personally use a loofah. My partner has a big scrubber that he uses. It, it obviously does a very dirty job, so he needs to be able to scrub behind his back. I know that a lot of people like to put the soap actually onto a loofah and use it to exfoliate. I think that they personally, especially not a plastic one, obviously plastic ones I believe would be quite bad for you to be scrubbing into your skin, but even the ones that are made from natural substances, I think they just harbour germs. Even if you're putting soap onto it, I just don't, under I don't understand what is wrong with good old fashioned using a soap block or if you've got the Dr Bronner's, squirting the Dr Bronner's into your hand, rubbing it all over yourself and occasionally making a scrub, which will be the next thing we go on to. I don't, I don't see the point in loofahs. Also, while we're on the subject of Dr Bronner's, what I actually realised after last week's video is I did count the Dr Bronner's in with my shared items for me and my partner, which I counted as seven items. I then proceeded to tell you all only six items, but the seventh item that I included was Dr Bronner's, so it was included. But I realised people may be thinking, hmm, she left Dr Bronner's out there and she's always going on about it. Well, I, I did leave it out, but not technically because I counted it. So, so there we have it, I've covered that. And let's move on to today's next item that I won't buy. So as I just mentioned, exfoliation, scrubs, things like that, I don't buy them because in general, if you ever look at the ingredients on the back, you can make them yourself. They're probably the, the one thing in skincare that is the easiest to make at home. You can use things like um, Himalayan rock salt, even regular salt. You can use sugar, coffee grounds. You can mix in a little bit of orange essential oil because vitamin C obviously very good for your skin. You can use bananas or if you don't want to waste the bananas, as somebody once mentioned, you can use banana peels. There are lots of things you can do to make foot scrubs, face scrubs, body scrubs. Obviously, you make it finer if it's for your face and on your body and be more gentle in your rubbing. So facial scrubs, all kinds of scrubs I do not buy. I won't see myself buying in the future because they are the easiest thing to make at home. And along that line of thought, while we're still on skincare, toners, I don't buy individual toners. I use tea tree oil, diluted. There are lots of things that can easily be used as a toner. And often with a micellar water, it has a kind of built in toner and cleanser as well. So I don't like having a sole purpose toner. I mean, imagine how much skincare we would have. I've seen people with these long rows and shelves of all the skincare because all the items are individual. So toner is not something I will be buying in the future. And whilst we're still kind of looking around in our bathroom type hygiene area of things, I do not ever have dual items, I combs. I don't know why people would need more than one comb, more than one brush, all that kind of thing. That seems to be one of the common things that people have most of that are dual items, but We'll group all that categories together. I don't buy dual items. And still on this subject, razors. I do not buy plastic razors. Occasionally, I try to just do waxing. Sometimes, you know, it's not the greatest experience going and having a wax. So sometimes I then decide I will shave. I currently use a wooden safety razor with refillable blades and I share that with my partner. The thing that I will not ever be buying in the future is disposable razors. Also lipstick. Lipstick is something I've just never really taken to. I've never bought it. I will never buy it. As a lot of you who are regular to the channel may know, I prefer a multifunctional kind of blush and lip tint. 
and occasionally if I do actually wear anything that is an individual use on my lips it would be just a tinted lip balm or a lip gloss. I don't actually like the texture of lipstick. I think it's sort of not quite moisturising enough. It always feels a bit sticky and hard on my lips so I don't like it. I know that's a very personal choice. Lots of people love lipstick so very personal choice there. And to end this section now Number 20 we should be at, I do not ever buy tampons anymore. I have a menstrual cup, I'll always be replacing this menstrual cup and if I ever don't feel like wearing the menstrual cup I may even go for the new kind of period underwear that's been invented. I will never be buying disposable tampons ever again. So moving into the next section, which I class as a kind of living room section, I'm going to start right off the bat with individual cleaning sprays. I, I don't have a spray for dusting and furniture, partly because I don't really have that much furniture. I don't think it's necessary to have an extra cleaner for the surfaces, then a cleaner for the bathroom, then a cleaner for the shower. I think a multifunctional cleaning spray is fine, so I don't buy individual cleaning sprays. So now we find ourselves in the living room type setting. What will I never buy in the living room? I don't like end tables, coffee tables. Currently we have one coffee table in our living room and that is because my partner wants one. Personally, if I lived on my own, I wouldn't and we don't have any end tables. I just think they are unnecessary and I will never be buying one in the future. Now, some people may argue that is because partly, as I'll cover later on in this video, I don't like buying new furniture anyway, but I definitely don't even feel the need to make or create another end table or coffee table that we will keep. And whilst we're in the living room, a lot of people's main focus in the living room seems to be a TV. I've discussed this before on a little bit of a similar video that I did, although it was small, which I think was an anti-haul for things I won't buy, but it was only five items. And one of those things was a TV. As I often blabber on about, I love my projectors. We have one in each room, in the bedroom, in the living room, so that sometimes we can occasionally watch different things if we're not in the mood to watch a similar thing together. And I just think that they are great. They take up no space. They are tiny. You can barely see them in your room. And I think that creates altogether a better feng shui type space and airiness to your room without having this big box in the corner that all your furniture is directed at. So TVs are not something that I will be buying ever again. And along the line of TVs, let's cover speakers. Now, this may be an interesting one to some people because usually if you have a projector, a lot of people choose to have speakers to make them more surround sound, but our projectors come with speakers in them. And really what I'm talking about is not necessarily the speakers that go with at-home sound system, but rather when people carry the individual speakers to listen to music out and about, it's not sort of in with my lifestyle doing that kind of thing. So I don't feel the need for little carrying type speakers. It's not something that I will need, I don't think, in the future. So when I was thinking about this list, I was also thinking about I was also thinking about what type of thing people may have in their living room. And I know that a lot of people like a lot of home decor. They like they think that coziness equates to lots of stuff, things like bar carts, little knickknacks out and about, trinket boxes. I don't buy anything like that. I won't buy anything like that in the future. In the way of this type of thing, as you can clearly see in the background here, the only thing I have are candle holders and 
dried flowers and plants, which moves me on to my next thing. Another thing that I will not ever be buying in the future is fragranced non soy or vegetable wax candles. Now I usually make my own candles out of soy wax, vegetable wax. If it's soy, it's certified organic and ethically sourced soy and only essential oil as a fragrance. The fragrance paraffin candles are not good for us. They've been proven to have formaldehyde. So that is something that I will never be buying in the future. If I occasionally decide to buy a candle, which is highly unlikely because I make them and myself, I would still look for it to be soy or vegetable wax and essential oil only. And be careful, always read the back, even if you think it's a natural sandal, natural candle, because sometimes in very small, it says a blend. So they've still blended it with fragrance and still blended it with paraffin wax. And along this line of thought with fragrance, I do not buy and will never buy fragrance diffusers, you know, the ones with the reeds. I have my essential oil diffuser that's an electronic steam one, all the steam comes out of, but the ones with the reeds, you know, you can make them at home, you can get natural ones, put essential oils just in a bottle and get natural ways of using reeds. You could even put things on, even use eucalyptus like that on the radiator, dried eucalyptus, and that gives out a little bit of a scent and even add a few drops of eucalyptus to the dried leaves. And then as your radiator gets hot, it also diffuses. So there are lots of ways to do that naturally. So I'll never be buying fragranced diffusers in the future. So what other kind of furniture do I see people having in the living room that quite simply I just don't have? I don't think I've ever have had it. Like in my living room, I like to just be simple and just have a sofa. And obviously I like a little hammock in there. But people seem to have lots of dresses and bureaus and things to hold all the stuff. But the thing is, is if you don't have much stuff, you don't really need all those things to hold all the stuff. So I can't see myself ever buying a bureau or a dresser in the future. And again, arguably, that's because I don't buy new furniture. I do like to upcycle furniture, but I can't even see myself getting some furniture with the purpose of upcycling it that is a dresser or a bureau. To me, it's just an item that I have no use for and therefore I don't want to buy. And also what I see quite a lot that I personally will not buy is excess lamps. Now, I do know that it's nice to have mood lighting. That's what I like candles for. And I do in general usually have one light and one lamp per room. I buy light, I mean, the ceiling light and then an extra lamp if you're trying to create ambience. But what I don't understand is excessive lights. I see sometimes in films, on Instagram, even in people's photographs that I know, even in people's homes that I know, lots of little lamps scattered all, the, all over the room. And I don't really understand why. I think one lamp is enough to create ambience. So I don't have excess lamps per room and therefore it's not something I want to buy. So the last thing in this sort of living room section is new sofas. I personally do not understand anybody buying a new sofa. My mum is actually from, from a background of interior and furniture design. And if you have ever actually deconstructed a sofa under that actual nice material and fabric. It is just a wooden frame that somebody has put a bit of foam on, a bit of memory foam and stretched fabric over. And often we pay obscene amounts of money for sofas only for them to come home, maybe last a couple of months before they get the first spillage on it. And then that is a depreciation of probably a couple of thousand pounds or thousand dollars. And I just think it is one of the biggest wastes of money in most people's homes. I am happy to go to a second-hand furniture store, get a relatively new second off somebody else and have it steam cleaned and disinfected, sometimes even reupholster it. 
but actually in the future i'm even considering making my own sofa i just think that new sofas are an absolute waste of our money so i personally will never buy one i've never bought a new sofa and that is the way of things in fact in the future when i hopefully one day save up and get my own place and we're not just renting i want to create all my furniture as a lot of you may know i make a lot of my furniture now but i would like actually to live in a home where i've created all my own furniture very in the kind of wabi sabi type style i'll insert some pictures of wabi sabi yeah that kind of lovely peaceful setting So that's the living room section done so now we should be at around 30 items so i'm going to move into the next category so this section is largely wardrobe perhaps mixed in with a few what might be personal items and miscellaneous items and the first thing on my list number 31 is sweaters i don't like personally wearing sweaters particularly hoodies i think that unfortunately which i've discussed in a few of videos particularly the feminist podcast i did that as a female wearing hoodies in the uk for some reason it is just considered scruffy and if i even had one just in my home to lounge around in i'm not gonna lie i'd be tempted to just wear it all the time because i know they are comfortable but I don't want to be tempted into then wearing them out of the house and unfortunately they're just really kind of frowned upon and sort of thought of as scruffy so I will not be buying hoodies for the foreseeable future. So what usually goes with a hoodie? Tracksuit bottoms, similar thing, be tempted to wear them if I had them, I know they're very comfortable but I don't want to be somebody who lives in jogging bottoms, they're just seen as being scruffy again so that is something that i don't buy and also in this section while we were on the subject of sweaters i personally loathe polar necks i know that some people think they're quite smart but i personally can't although i love wearing scarves perhaps that's why i don't need a polar neck i find a polar neck that is quite tight as being too restrictive but then when you get these kind of loose cowl necks that kind of bulkiness there when it's attached to me, not like a scarf and I can't take it off. I find it really annoying. So that's something again, that I will not be buying in the future. And now moving to hats. I only ever wear a woolen hat in the winter. And I do actually think that people look really nice in hats. It's just something that when I've tried having it in the past, I never wear. So hats are not something I would be buying in the future. So, yet yeah, no kind of Panama or straw hats for me. Then, as I discussed once in another video, I realised that when I buy trainer socks, I actually find them very uncomfortable, perhaps because my feet are so small. They're always a little bit too big for me. They kind of rub in the back of my trainers. So what I've since decided is they're not worth the effort or the trouble. So in my trainers, cringe if you want, I do not wear socks, choosing just to wash my trainers every so often. I'm quite lucky in that I don't sweat a lot out of my feet. So I don't feel like my trainers ever really smell, although now I just prefer to wash my trainers as and when they need it, rather than wearing trainer socks. Hair dryers. I do not dry my hair. I like to straighten it and therefore to limit the amount of heat on it i prefer to leave it to dry naturally and then later when it has dried naturally straightening it once 
then wearing it up before I actually wash it. I try, I do not straighten it every day and I do occasionally try to wear it curly. And it is naturally curly, which moves me on to my next item. The next item I do not buy is curling tongs because my hair is naturally curly. And if I ever want more of a uniform curl, I simply use my straighteners with the curl method using straighteners where you wrap it around and through and pull. So no, no buying curling tongs either for me. As I've only just covered in last week's video, I do not like a shoe that is again one use therefore I do not buy slippers I will never buy slippers personally I actually like just being barefoot in the house and if I feel a need to kind of put something on to run out to the bins or whatever I will actually just slide on my sandals so I don't find a use for slippers and that can be even said for any kind of one use shoe item or even dual item dual shoe types i don't feel the need for obviously you've all seen well many of you if you are a regular viewer have seen my shoe collection i personally only have one of each type one trainer one sandal one boot one snow boot one flat boot you know i only have one of each one of those categories i don't feel the need for dual items in that category either so that should now bring us to 40 items and now we're kind of moving into bedroom territory and the next thing i do not have is i don't like to have any furniture except a bed in my bedroom so that is not something that i will be buying in the future and really what i mean by that is things like drawers wardrobes freestanding wardrobes drawers that type of thing i like a bed a bedroom to be very kind of peaceful and tranquil with not a lot going on so currently in our bedroom because we don't have the have the space and the facility unfortunately to have a little separate dressing room i still wanted to keep it as airy as possible so we just have two rails a rail each for my partner and i on our wall and we have one little shelf behind our bed this is where i am now in the bedroom which has a plant on it and as you can see we've got a radiator shelf with a few plants on it and my blanket ladder that i made has got little lights on it and when we are too warm we simply take our blanket which you guys are now standing on and put it on the blanket ladder and then we have a tiny little trolley that we pull out to watch our projector on an evening on that wall and that is actually the most furniture i've just about ever had in a bedroom normally it will just be the bed and that is it perhaps with the exception of a tiny little shelf for the projector okay so the next thing that you will never catch me buying is obscene diamond jewelry so what do i mean by obscene to be honest i'm not somebody who wears a lot of jewelry anyway but i would never buy an obscenely expensive diamond jewellery, whatever that be, whether it be obscene diamond earrings, obscene necklace, obscene bracelets. To be honest, I'm not somebody who ever really wears bracelets anyway, and that's partly because of my horse riding background. Rings, bracelets are a little bit of ha a hazard around horses. They could easily get caught on something and you don't really want to lose a finger or your hand if they get caught in reins. So that's something I kind of got out of the habit of wearing quite young and I've never kind of gotten back into that habit. But really, when I say the thing about diamonds, you know, they can be certified as ethical now. I just think that spending above a certain amount on a jewellery item is just for me ethically not doable i would just think about all the better uses for that money in terms of poverty in the world so i personally couldn't live with myself for spending a few thousand pounds on something that was just going to sit on my wrist and twinkle and i think i had a little bit of a miscount before but now we are actually at 40 items and the 40th item is similarly on the wrist watches 
Now, watches do provide a use. You don't have to spend an obscene amount of money on them. But personally, like I said, I got out of the habit of wearing things on my wrist for a safety aspect of horse riding. I personally don't want to know the time every second of the day. I also have the added trouble that I have very little wrists. And believe it or not, it is very, very hard to get a watch to fit them. And often the face will end up being actually bigger than my wrist itself. I don't like the feeling of it being so, so close to my hand and it feel weird having, I just don't like wearing them. They feel uncomfortable to me. So unless I could get used to that, I can't see myself ever wearing one. And I did actually say to my boyfriend that the only time I could ever see myself wearing a watch is if Apple brought out a watch that was solely usable as a phone because I think it would be great if they just made a phone that was a watch as a standalone item. Currently the Apple watches have to be paired with a phone otherwise they don't really work and the whole idea for me was to not have a phone so that I could perhaps just have a camera and then have a watch that also did the job of answering the phone. I also think it would increase my productivity because I know I don't go on social media a lot but I would be even less tempted to if I just had a phone watch that didn't have all the apps and really if you ever wanted to look at that kind of thing you would just have to go on a laptop so that's the caveat I'm putting on that I can't see myself ever buying a watch unless Apple bring out a standalone watch phone so 41 notebooks i never buy notebooks because as i've discussed in many other videos it seems to be a thing that i am gifted a lot so usually if somebody gives me one i will either re-gift it or i will use it up i think i still have one in our apartment that we are currently using up between my partner and i whenever we need to jot something down but we do not personally buy notebooks and what goes with the notebook? A pen. I have I have a wooden fountain pen that we share together. My partner does personally also buy biros. I try to encourage him to buy ones that are in metal containers, uh, metal shells. So personally, I would never buy a plastic biro. And sadly, the only thing that we do have to buy that is plastic is I like using the white chalk board pens. Uh, they work on glass, sorry, better than boards. And there's currently not really, a, I don't know of, a chalk pen that doesn't come in a plastic container that enables you to write on glass. And I like writing memos and things on the glass. So that's the only thing I do buy that's a pen in plastic. But personally, I would never buy a biro that is in plastic ever again. There are lots of other alternatives. And if you really like a biro over a fountain pen, there is metal options and refillable options. So where are we going to do all this writing with our non-plastic pens at a desk? So I have had a desk in the past, as you probably saw on my first ever home tour. However, that desk was just an upcycle project. I personally don't buy any desks that have the sole purpose of a desk, especially because I always live in small apartments. I try to make my means go far and therefore I live in small apartments and I want to have as much space as possible. I want things to be as versatile and flexible as possible. So usually I will just use a table, get good ergonomically designed chairs at that table, which is a table for any purpose, whether it's sitting and eating, sitting and chatting, sitting and studying, sitting and typing, sitting on your laptop. I don't personally ever want to have a desk that has just that sole purpose as it's space I can't afford to use because I'm trying to make the best of what small space I have. But honestly, I don't think I would even if I had a bigger space. I kind of like the desks that are the desk designs that are just like tables and are very open. So that's definitely something I wouldn't buy in the future. Something that is very kind of just desk orientated. So what's another common thing that we see on people's desks? 
sole purpose scissors. So I've seen in lots of households, it's common to have a kitchen pair of scissors, a office pair of scissors, maybe a hair cutting pair of scissors, maybe a parcel wrapping pair of scissors. I don't know. We have one pair of scissors for everything. I think as long as you clean it, wipe it, disinfect it in between, I do not think it matters no sole purpose scissors for us and also in terms of things that you might need in a household no plastic lighters either personally prefer to use matches obviously the wood the compostable so that's what i personally like to use but also i suppose another thing would be i suppose a zippo lighter you can get sustainable fuel and things for those and at least they are refillable, metal, just not plastic lighters. I will ever be buying them. Thinking about the office and study theme, I also do not buy new books. I prefer to download them to Kindle, just download ebooks in general, even just to the internet if you can't get it on Kindle go to the library, borrow books or buy secondhand books. Currently, I don't have any books. I don't even think I'm going to buy any secondhand books. But occasionally there are books out there, particularly with philosophy, with it being such an old subject, which I do read and study. And you cannot always get them on Kindle with them being so old. So occasionally I have to get secondhand books. They're not always available in my current library. They do have quite a good order service, but occasionally I'm kind of forced to buy a secondhand book, but then I never keep them. So I sort of see it as weirdly buying them, borrowing them or renting them, because I know that I'm buying it just with the purpose to read it and give it on, whether that be it to charity or resell it, depending on the price. Some philosophy books are very expensive. So that's something that I don't see myself buying anyway in the future. No new books. As I've also discussed in the past, I live in a very small town. We don't have a lot of shops. We just have a TK Maxx, a Max and Spencers. So often, unfortunately, I am forced to buy from Amazon when I need something. So I do have the odd Amazon box lying around from time to time. So at least I recycle that packaging. I try to, if I need a few things, save up to get those things all delivered in one to cut down on my carbon footprint. And I also save that packaging to use for future packaging of things I may be selling or sending or gifting to somebody. So I never buy new parcel or packaging boxes. And I think finally on the list, but let me just check because I don't want to make a mistake. So it wasn't quite finally, it was second to last on the list. I do not buy, nor will I ever buy, I don't think, bulky armchairs. I prefer to just have a big sofa, then have floor and scatter cushions, the occasional hammock or a hanging from the ceiling chair. But if I have a chair, I like it to be very kind of slim lined because these big bulky chairs just take up too much space, whether it be an armchair or an office chair. If it is bulky, I don't want it. I don't want it interrupting the airflow around the tranquility of the room. I'm a firm believer in the kind of feng shui of space and leaving things open. So I do not ever intend to buy a big bulky chair, even if I found one second hand. So it's not just new chairs, but all bulky chairs. And then now, finally on the list, let's say one digital thing, at least in this ever growing digital world. One thing I do not buy is any app that is not a streaming app. So as I've discussed before, I love films. Therefore, I do pay for Netflix. I do pay for Prime Video. And I share some of these apps with people that are close to me and we share back. So we're not all, all purchasing, say, four apps. But I don't actually pay for everything, anything else. I know there are lots of people that make YouTube videos that pay for Epidemic Sound, 
pay for Canva, pay for all these things. But there are just a few to shop around, pun intended. Lots of free services that currently I don't feel the need to have to pay for anything like that. I don't pay for any other apps. So that has been 50 items I do not buy as I don't see the point of them. And especially, I suppose, as an extreme minimalist. And I hope you've enjoyed this slightly different background that I've given you guys for a change. I know that the lighting isn't great. I have to just deal with it because I do not have a light and I'm reluctant to... I've got a very small light, but in general that only lights my face a tiny bit. It still doesn't light the room. So I am reluctant to buy any kind of large diffusing light because it's just so big and bulky to have in such a small flat. So please, you know, if you are also a minimalist watching this video, please accept my apologies for perhaps that slight reduction in quality because it is because my minimalist values have outweighed the value of wanting to light the room more. And But at least I've tried to give you a little bit of a different backdrop, this radiator shelf with my lights on, with my candles on. And thank you very much, guys, for watching. Bye.